we have a nice picture full of contrast. So we need to preserve all the light areas using masking fluid. Don't forget to rinse out your brush very regularly while applying the masking fluid. If you don't, then the fluid will harden on the brush. There are ways to remove the masking fluid, so don't throw your brush away. Start the background off with a very dark mix of Viridian and Burnt Sienna. Keep it dark in the top left hand corner and lighten slightly as we reach the bottom right hand side of the flowers. Remember that dark wet colors dry lighter. Now add a touch of yellow in this corner. When this dark area is dry, add a few darker lines to show vegetation in the shadows. And by using a damp brush, lift out some lighter lines to add depth to this area. Remove the masking fluid once you are certain that the painting is completely dry. Paint in the orange tops and then the shadow colors of the stems and around the stamens of the flowers. This shadow color has a very slight yellow tinge to it. Build up the stamen area with small dabs of darker paint and do this for all the flowers. The brightest part of the petals is the highlight so we first paint a very light yellow over all the petals. Starting with the main flower begin blocking in the shadow areas with a green gray mix. This main flower must be kept lighter in tonal range than the others because it's the main focal point. Continue working on the petals, putting in the shadows and the lighter yellow. It is good practice to check all your colors on an identical piece of scrap paper as to what you are painting on. Checking the colors beforehand can often save a lot of heartache. Now work backwards and forwards among the flowers as this way it is much easier to compare the colors and the tonal ranges. The flowers are all backlit, so we have most of the petals in a semi-transparent condition with the sunlight shining through them, and we have to try and copy this. If necessary, you may even have to lift off some color to keep the tonal ranges correct. Now, tonal ranges count much more than color does. These leaves are mostly in the shade. The best way to begin the reflections is to plot in all or most of the dark areas. It will be much easier then to see and paint in the lighter reflected colors. Leave all the light areas until the last, being extra careful not to encroach in too much into them. It is the dramatic play of light and dark that makes the painting pop. Where necessary, darken up areas even more. The main dark reflection is already painted in, so we now need to add in all the other supporting actors. Remember, you are telling a story with your painting. Carefully weave the different colors and tonal ranges so that they are in harmony with each other. I want you to notice how the main shadow is much lower down and it becomes like an arrow pointing to the focal point. The smaller shadow to the right points inwards to direct the viewer's eye back into the painting. Because of the movement of the water, all reflections follow a zigzag pattern. Just make sure you don't lose the orange reflections in the water. Please like this video if you have enjoyed watching it and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe so we can inform you when we bring out more new tutorials like this one. If you would like to see the paint along version of this class head over to our website onlineartlessons.com.